Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Witness. We have a couple things to do. Uh, the first thing is, well, as you know, last time we saw the last of these movies, but there is another movie I think I have to bring up. There's a line up here made of leaves, and it's sort of like, sort of pinkish a little bit. It kind of looks like this line, so I'm wondering if the circle I need for it is the same circle I used for this, which was in this movie. Let's take a look at this. Uh, it's... the that one right there, that book. I don't know if that's actually it, but we're going to start this movie off. And we're going to run away. And we're going to just walk on, on top of the catwalk that's above us. And I'm sure we'll get there in time before we get to the necessary part. It'll just take a few seconds to get back to where we need to be. You can see James Burke on the screen in front of us. Can't hear him, though, but we will hear him in a bit. This way. Here we go. The why things change. All right. Is the key to everything. How easy is it for knowledge to spread? So you see the part of the circle right there, right? And then it leads up this line, and then around, and ends right there. Okay. So this has got to match up with a circle in a movie. It would seem strange if it was this one again considering that would be three lines that came from this one movie. True driving force of humanity. Most of the movies don't have any lines. What about the Beethovens and the Michelangelos? Let me suggest something with which you may disagree violently. That at best, the products of human emotions, art, philosophy, politics, music, literature, are interpretations of the world that tell you more about the guy who's talking than about the world he's talking about. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but we have heard this already. I'm just looking for the book. Yeah, this book right here. This book. Things like that. Is that, is that, is that like that? Right, that oh, uh, that, was that a right there? It's a bunch of amino acids. Hold on, let's see if that appears again. Goes to build up a, a worm or a so maybe you have to stand right here. Because it did look like it was matching up with something. Yep, there it is. All right. Well, thank you, James Burke, for the three lines, and I'll just leave you running, uh, because I am out of here at this point. I don't know if I need to do I don't think I need to do anything more with that movie theater. I think we're done with that. Let's get on out of here and have a look at that town obelisk. Of course, most of our last session was spent on a single line in that movie theater. This line right here. That was the line that <laughs> took that entire movie. I ended up watching it twice, so basically I spent two hours on that one line. This is the line that we just got. So everything here is lit up, which means I believe we've now done everything in the movie theater. What else is on here? There are these. And yeah, everything else is lit up. Okay. So these four, or at least two of them, are in the opening area. Like this one right here looks like it's the yellow flower line. It starts here and ends here, but I don't know how to get that middle sec segment. And this is the gateway that goes around the opening area. And speaking of that, we might as well just go right there. Because the one thing that I have left, uh, the one lead, the one clue, was that diagram that we found by the movie theater uh, that showed what seems to be the solution to the gateway in the opening area. So, of course, when we first did the gateway, when we turned it off back at the beginning of the game, um, I just drew a line from the top to the bottom, and I haven't been able to do anything else with it. But, we did get a diagram saying that maybe there's something we should do with it, and this one's closed off for right now. So, let's turn that back on, which is over here. Up and over. Okay. Right, so we want it to go out the bottom. And 
that powered that on. That unlocked that panel. So yeah, when we first started the game, this was a gateway that was on. I drew from the top to the bottom and turned it off. All right, so now we learned something. I'm going to get my notebook out. We found a diagram, and it looks like this right here has three orange triangles. This is two. This is one. All right, so if we were going to draw it like that, so we want three lines adjacent to that, right? We want two lines adjacent to this, and then finally, one line adjacent to that. And what does that do? Turns it back on. So, all right, so what I'm thinking is that when I first did this, I thought I solved this puzzle, but no, actually I failed the puzzle, right? So I failed it and turned it off. So this puzzle was never solved. I solved it now and turned it back on. So being on is the solved state, is I guess how it works. Now, we see that there is that line around it. And that does match up with the biggest circle of all, now doesn't it? Well, it appears that this uh, gateway can transport us to other places. This is turned off entirely. Doesn't seem like anything else here is different, but something has opened up in front of us. This seems oddly contemporary for this island. Right? We've seen, we've been there. We know where that is. It's in the treetops. We've seen this logo a whole bunch of times. Hasn't had any meaning so far, though. At least I haven't noticed anything. The hedge maze. I wonder if this is concept art for the witness. Mm, a bar. Can we have a drink? Probably not. Where are we standing on? So, I'm standing on a structure that I certainly was not able to see from the outside. Was it always here, just invisible? Or did it appear? Did, did it manifest into being after doing that sun line? Well, there's some wisdom, but first let's look around. I saw some wisdom on the desk back there as well. Do the high and mighty hang out here and watch people struggle with the puzzles? Is that how it works? I don't know if that's how it works. Well, I mean, there's no one here right now, of course. More wisdom. Right, there's the challenge. Some sort of control panel with the record player. I think I remember this image back when The Witness was very, very early. Jonathan Blow was just talking about it, but nothing was seen yet. So this probably is concept art. What we got here. That's the gateway that we just did. A lot, bunch of these have a lot more triangles than what we just did. Well, I guess let's start listening to what this wisdom has to say. Ever in my life, 
have I sought thee with my songs. It was they who led me from door to door, and with them I have felt about me, searching and touching my world. It was my songs that taught me all the lessons I ever learned. They showed me secret paths. They brought before my sight many a star on the horizon of my heart. They guided me all the day long to the mysteries of the country of pleasure and pain. And at last, to what palace gate have they brought me in the evening at the end of my journey? What indeed? What palace gate is this? Such pleasure and pain we have experienced with the witness. Audio by Wabi Sabi Sound. Andrew Lackey. Bo Anthony Jimenez. Jeff Garnett. Luca Fusi. Eric Lorenz. Were those credits? Is this quite literally a dev room? I don't think I can turn that on. Where the developers hang out, they draw puzzle graphs on the graph paper, trying to figure out what would make for a good puzzle, a solvable puzzle. There was a third one around here. Yeah, over here by the edge. The core development team of The Witness was comprised more or less as follows. Design and generally steering the ship, Jonathan Blow. Programming, Ignacio Castaño, Salvador Belmurciano, Andrew Smith. Modeling and texturing, Luis Antonio, or she Spaniel, Eric A. Anderson. Yeah, I mean, this is these are definitely credits that we're getting right here. Let's head upstairs. Getting closer to the clouds that we have been able to before. As always, I'm continuing to look for the possible presence of circles and lines since there are some still remaining. Oh, and this is the cavern that we saw when we were doing the challenge. Wasn't sure if there was a way up here. I guess there was. Oh, is this a special orange one? What does it have to say? Additional contributions and modeling by Shannon Galvin, Alex Hayworth, Andrea Blazic, Eric Urquhart, and David Hellman. Additional contributions in programming by Casey Miratori, Andrew Heenick, Nicholas Ray. Anything around for us to look at? Anything for us to notice? Well, I don't remember any dogs. Well, no, I, I do. Actually, I do remember one dog. We did find one dog. A small dog hidden away in a corner. We travel ever higher above the island and into some impossible space. 
because the opening area of the game is over there somewhere. It's somewhere in that area. It's certainly not where we're standing. Still continuing to look around to see if there's any lines that we should click on. Since we're seeing, getting a so much higher perspective on the island than we usually do. These screens have nothing to show us. Well, I mean, that's outdated. The, that gate is open and that laser is active. So clearly that surveillance footage is not live. I always wondered about that castle with what looks to be like ink or something or oil coming out of the windows. It never turned out to be anything. You couldn't do anything with that. Someone packing away some wisdom. What wisdom does it have to say to us? Special thanks to our friends at Sony. Nick Sutner, Adam Boyce, Justin Massengill, Alessandro Bavenzi. Thanks, Sony. And we see the island ever higher, again from a diff completely different angle from where we just were. You can see the entire island in one viewpoint now. The strobing colors of the lasers never turn out to be anything either. I felt that probably would have to be something. It was not. It was not anything. Odd illusion. Can't seem to do anything with it. But there is something here. I'm actually surprised to see another normal puzzle panel. Didn't really expect to see more. Let's see. But why are none of these... Okay, no, the lights are on now here. Is this an actual image of their studios? Sort of a 3D image. We can sort of scroll back and forth as we walk past. There's like a dead body on the couch. I wouldn't be surprised. Jonathan Blow kept... Oh, no, I shouldn't say that about Jonathan Blow. Yeah, like you see, it's like a hand coming off right there.
I mean, I, I won't make any assumptions as to why Jonathan Blow has a dead body in his office. Maybe it gives him inspiration.
all right, the game just closed automatically at the end of that. Uh, what? I guess uh, we woke up in Jonathan Blow's office, and maybe we were Jonathan Blow himself? Possibly? Hard to say. Uh, we woke up, apparently... We were we were unconscious for a long time, it would seem, considering the state of things. And then we stepped outside, tapping all the circles as we went, attempting to find lines. We did not find any. We did not find any. I, I guess that was the secret end to the witness. I started the game up again, and we ended up here. Okay. So it looks like it brings us back to the point where we can open this up. All right, so, huh, that was the, uh, well, so so we got two endings so far. I mean, that's those are the two endings of the game, one where we went into a great class elevator and all the puzzles reset, and the second one where we st strolled through, I guess, a hallway of consciousness and woke up back in the real world. I'm not going to try to pretend that there's some sort of story connected to any of that because there probably is not. There probably is not. Um, what I would say, however, is that it would be kind of funny if you activated this right at the beginning of the game because you probably could, right? Like this gateway is on when you first start the game. You probably wouldn't notice that, that line right there. You probably wouldn't notice it, but if you did, it would be kind of funny if you did that right away. I'm sure just how with how many people played the game, statistically speaking, there must be someone who did that. Well, that's the secret ending. That's everything. Though it's not quite everything, is it? Because we don't have all the lines. There are still lines we have not gotten. I mean, we got this one, but... There are, uh, there are other lines, like this. Like this one? Still haven't gotten this. Remember that? Apparently it ends right here. And, like, there's supposed to be a line that goes across the bottom of this. I, I, I haven't gotten that. I don't see a yellow line that goes across the bottom here. And it doesn't exactly seem like, uh... It doesn't exactly seem like there's yellow flowers anywhere to continue that line. So that's something that I'm still confused about. It also doesn't seem like you can actually activate the line anywhere but right here. There's no way to move around. Well, the point is, is that we still do have lines that we need to get. Not everything has been done, though most things have been done. And the important things have been done. We did the challenge, we got all the movies, and we've gotten the secret ending. But there are still more lines to go. And that's what I have to do right now. In addition to lines, it seems that there is a significant amount of wisdom that we have not been exposed to. And how can our education be complete until we have consumed the entirety of what the witness has to offer? It had been mentioned to me that the pond does represent sort of a map of the island so if you're looking for things that you might have missed, you can look in the pond to see what things might symbolize. Like, for instance, these, uh, these white flowers represent wisdoms that we have, we have consumed. The closed ones, however, we have not. If we did, it would open up. So that's something we haven't done. Like right here, see that there are two here that we have not done. And if the pond represents the whole island, uh, these two over here must represent the very edge of the island because like, we're because that would be right on the edge there. And I would turn around, whoop, turn around, and look in this direction to see where that's going. Well, let me get up, get up here so I can get a better view. Oh, uh, right, so they were two of them here. Turn around. Where are we looking? If that was the case. Well, it looks like that we're looking at the Sun Temple. Well, not quite the Sun Temple. But kind of in that direction. If 
I'm going to the very... It's either the Sun Temple or, like, the canyon area right here. I can't really go in the middle of them because that's just water. So it looks like I'm looking for something right on the very edge of the island. There's one. It's glowing green. I was right here doing puzzles at one time. Like, I was, I must have been like this and just did not look down. Formerly, you appeared to me, O Lord, as invisible by every creature because you are a hidden, infinite God. Infinity, however, is incomprehensible by every means of comprehending. Later, you appeared to me as visible by all. For a thing exists only as you see it, and it would not actually exist unless it saw you. For your vision confers being, since your vision is your essence. Thus, my God, you are equally invisible and visible. As you are, you are invisible as the creature is, which exists only in so far as the creature sees you, you are visible. You, therefore, my invisible God, are seen by all, and in all sight you are seen by everyone who sees. You who are invisible, who are both absolute from everything visible and infinitely super exalted, are seen in every visible thing and in every act of vision. Therefore, I must leap across this wall of invisible vision to where you are to be found. But this wall is both everything and nothing. For you, who confront as if you were both all things and nothing at all, dwell inside that high wall which no natural ability can scale by its own power. Nicholas of Cusa, 1453. So remember, you have to draw lines on the transparent panels. It, the panels are invisible, but the, they're there. The, the puzzles are visible. Got some pillows. If you want to sit right here, have a look around. Little little picnic, relax a little bit. That's not what we're what we're here to do, though. No relaxing for us. We're here to educate ourselves. We found one, but according to that pond, there should be a second around here. And here we go. One nature, perfect and pervading, circulates in all natures. One reality, all comprehensive, contains within itself all realities. The one moon reflects itself wherever there is a sheet of water, and all the moons in the waters are embraced within the one moon. The absolute of all the Buddhas enters into my own being and my own being is found in union with theirs. The inner light is beyond praise and blame. Like space, it knows no boundaries. Yet it is even here, within us, ever retaining its serenity and fullness. It is only when you hunt for it that you lose it. You cannot take hold of it, but equally you cannot get rid of it. And while you can do neither, it goes on its own way. You remain silent and it speaks. You speak and it is dumb. The great gate of charity is wide open with no obstacles before it. Young Cha Tashi, circa 700. Well, I can feel the enlightenment appearing in in the center of my brain 
as we continue to learn that that the witness still has more stuff to tell us. It is not done. I mean, technically, we could be done at any time. It's said that you're done with the, with the witness once you're satisfied. But how do you know when you're satisfied? Well, clearly, you're satisfied when you've gotten all of the things. We're playing a video game, of course. We need to get all the things. All of them. See? Like, that one's closed over there, too. I noticed there was a closed flower over here on this side of the map by the wrecked ship. It was not on the wrecked ship, according to the pond, but next to it somewhere, just like way on the edge of the pond. So I was looking around here by this tree. It looks like we are going to have something to listen to. I missed it. I'm going to have to go back. Uh, no, this way. Let's slow that down. Make sure I'm able to get that. Yeah, it's right on this rock. Let's take it slow. Make sure that we get it. There it is. Lustily. I dipped my oars into the silent lake, and as I rose upon the stroke, my boat went heaving through the water like a swan. When, from behind that craggy steep, till then the horizon's bound, a huge peak, black and huge, as if with voluntary power instinct, upreared its head. I struck and struck again, and growing still in stature, Grim shape towered up between me and the stars. But after I had seen that spectacle, for many days my brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown modes of being. Or my thoughts, their hung of darkness. I call it solitude or blank desertion. William Wordsworth. 1888. More wisdom consumed by us. It is now in our brains. From the witness in your human brain right now. I'm continuing to look for wisdom in lines. I've been taking a look in this area here because I feel like one of the lines on the town obelisk is going to be like part of this line that I already got and then going all the way to the end here but I'm just looking around for the right perspective on that. While I was doing that I just happened to come across one of the things that we're looking for. Didn't look at the pond for it this time. I just happened to walk across and it was here. Time to get educated. Oh Lord God, helper of those who seek you. I see you in the garden of paradise. And I do not know what I see, because I see nothing visible. I know this alone, that I know that I do not know what I see and that I can never know. I do not know how to name you because I do not know what you are. Should anyone tell me that you are named by this or that name, by the fact that one gives a name, I know that it is not your name. For the wall beyond which I see you is the limit of every mode of signification by names. Should anyone express any concept by which you could be conceived, I know that this concept is not a concept of you. For every concept finds its boundary at the wall of paradise. Should anyone express any likeness and say that you ought to be conceived according to it, I know in the same way that this is not a likeness of you. So too, if anyone, wishing to furnish the means by which you might be understood, should set forth an understanding of you, one is still far removed from you. For the highest wall separates you from all these, and secludes you from everything that can be said or thought, because you 
are absolute from all the things that can fall within any concept. Nicholas of Cusa, 1453. More about the nature of the invisible and walls. Don't forget about the walls. The walls of comprehension and perception, just like such walls we are dealing with when trying to draw a line and a circle. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep trying at this. All right, I think I see where this one is. Like, this line that has this, like, a little notch and then goes to the end. Uh, it seems to be this black line that goes around the edge of this dock. Now, I already got environmental line with that. Like, if I clicked on that, you see it glowing like that. So, I guess I just wasn't paying attention to that line. But it looks like that there is more than one line that you can make from from this black line that goes around. So... Let's just get into position with the boat, because in order to draw this next line, we will need to be moving. No, oh, actually, hold on. I want to go the other way. Because, like, that's going to be the end of it here. The first line that I drew ends right there. I guess I just didn't think about a second line happening. All right, let's turn it around. And head the other way. Let's just stand straight here before we click on it. There we go. All right. So this is where the first one ended. But it looks like that if we keep going... Go around and to this end. So that was there the whole time in front of me. Not many left on the town. At this point, it's only two. The yellow flowers one, which I'm still not sure about. And one other one that doesn't look very remarkable, but I haven't seen it around anywhere. But I'm continuing to look. So this yellow flowers puzzle is one of the thing that currently I'm having the most trouble with. Like with the other lines, it's just a matter of that I don't know where they are. But I know where this line is. It's right here. I know where the end of the line is. It's right here. And according to the obelisk in the town, uh, you should be able to draw the line across the floor to that. To that. And I, I don't know how to do it. It's just there's nothing on the floor to draw it on. So for this one, I did have to go for a little bit of help and uh, get a hint. And the hint that I was given is that I should look for a column in this opening area. And there is a column right over there. I have noticed this before. It's just you can't do anything with it. There are triangles on it. And we know what orange triangles are for. But if it's not even a puzzle that we can do anything with, then what would we do with these orange triangles? Oh, maybe we can do something with it. There is something here. Oh. So this is actually a column puzzle. It's just one that... Uh... It's not glowing, so you have to click on it to activate it. Okay. So all of these, we would want to have one line touching. So something like that. And then over here. Let's see. I can't do that because that would cause... Everything to be touching. Well, that would cause one of them to be uh, touched by two lines. We can't have that. No, we cannot. So we could do something like that. And then back. In. Well, no, we still couldn't do that. Now, could we? We could do that. And then down and across. 
cross? No, because then... Because then... The one on the bottom would have two lines touching it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would. So that doesn't quite work. We could do this, and now all of those have one line touching them. Oh, but that goes to the exit. That blocks the exit, so we can't do that. So maybe let's bring it down by one. Bring it down by one. And then... How would we do this? Mm, maybe not. Okay, so once again, let's see. How would we do this? If we did something like this, now all of those are touched by one line. And go around here. What happens if we go? No, I can't. I'm blocked by my own line. So that is not going to work. And if I try doing this, it's not going to work because I would have to go along the bottom like that and it's touched by two. All right, so regardless, I guess this, what we're doing right now, is the key to the yellow flowers and the reason why I was just never able to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing with these flowers. This is why. Because I just never tried to activate this column. Just never thought about it. Uh, hold on. No, it's, no, no. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? What do I want to do? Can't do it. Can't do it like that. Because that one's going to have to. So that doesn't work. Alright, everything has to have just one. Everything, just one. And no more. No more than one. No more than one. Two is right out. Can't have two. Can't have it. If I went all the way across the bottom, I could do that. And then what if I went back and then did that and then this way and did that and then did that and then did that and then did that and then went along here to the exit. What about that? No. No, for, forget it. That did, that did not work. Why did not that not work? Let me try that again and see why it didn't work. Let's see. One line. Uh, let's, well... That one at the bottom doesn't have one touch in it, which is a problem. And that goes to the exit, which is no good. I could do this. And then around here. Would that work? No. Something. That okay, that one did not have a that one was not touched. They all need to be touched. They all need to be they all need affection, as we all do. It's not something that's restricted to just, you know, stone columns. We all need it. We all do. Let's see. Both of those are now touched. Ah, but I'm blocked. So I could go up, but then the one below the cursor right now would not be touched. How, uh, but I want to touch it. All right. Yeah, then I'm blocked by the line if I do that. 
So that's a, that's still a problem. What if I started off by doing this and then did that and then went up and did that and then went up and then did that and then went up and did that and then went up and did that is everything touched at this point went up th th looks like everything is touched yes indeed everything was touched was there a cable there the whole time i don't remember seeing a cable so i'm gonna assume it was invisible and it looks like something has now appeared yeah something has appeared all right, so I guess this uh, this explains some things. It explains how you're supposed to complete this line. All right. Okay. Uh, I, okay, so I do have to solve the puzzle first, and then I guess I can do the line. Because I start from here. Get that. Get this. Get, get, get this. Hex dot. Go to the exit there. It's a very dramatic sound. It connects the two. And now. No? Can't draw on that. All right. So. They are different colors. The line is white, and the yellows are... The, the yellows are... Ye the, the, the flowers are yellow, not the yellow are flowers. So how do I make this yellow? Okay, I can make it yellow by getting it wrong, it seems. Alright, so let's try that. Let's get it... Let's go all the way wrong. I'm gonna get this wrong. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, as long as I get one, as long as one of them, one of the hex dots is not gotten, it will be yellow, which means, get this, is it fading out? I don't know if it's fading out, but let's see if we can do this, and, yes. There we go. And, just for the sake of it. Just leave it in a solve position. And did those two puzzles I get count as normal puzzles? Hold on. Yes, they did. And now I have 523 puzzles solved. And that means, I believe, I think I'm right this time, that that is all of the normal puzzles in The Witness. Still a few more environmental puzzles. But I guess that's been, I guess the two remaining that I was not able to find were the one here and the one here. How fitting that the two last normal puzzles were in the first area of the game. I know that I've noticed that had, this had triangles before, but I guess I just never looked close enough at it. Oh, and speaking of environmental puzzles, when I was looking around all here, I did notice this. This must have been in front of me many times as I've walked in and, in and around this arena, this little area. But I guess you just don't notice it. And... With those two done... It might be the case that that means that the town obelisk has now been completed. Let's just hurry over there and see if that is indeed the case. It is. All of the lines on the obelisk have been completed.
And so, four obelisks done, two more to go. And I believe it's only three environmental puzzles to complete those two. Is that... Did I just never see that? Your question is the most difficult in the world. It is not a question I can answer simply with yes or no. I am not an atheist. I do not know if I can define myself as a pantheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. May I not reply with a parable? The human mind, no matter how highly trained, cannot grasp the universe. We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books, but does not know how, it does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order in the arrangement of the books, but doesn't know what that is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of the most intelligent human toward God. Albert Einstein, 1930. Another one from Einstein. I think the first one we got was from Einstein as well. Um, so that's another wisdom ingrained into our brains. And one more obelisk completed. So two more to go. I'm, st I'm still looking. I'm still looking around. Let's see if we can keep doing it. I've been continuing to look around. As, well, as you know, you know what we're doing here. You know that we're trying to find these last lines. On the mountain obelisk, there are two lines. This, this. I've been looking around for them. Um, and I've been looking around in the Tetris area. Because if you, you look at them, these have these hard edge turns. Does not seem like they would be something that you would find in nature, but rather something man-made. And that was, indeed the case. Let's just uh, get back over to Tetris Town. Tetrisville. I probably should have learned the actual official names for these locations at some point as I've been playing. Never did. Just, just called these areas whatever it was I wanted to call them. They have names. Turns out, everything does have a name. Uh, right there. All right. So these two, this took me kind of a while to find. I've been looking for these last two on this mountain for, uh, on the mountain obelisk for some time. And I just was not seeing them. Then I realized something. If you look at this platform that we're on right now, like there are these circles like that that make these shadow circles. And we have gotten lines like that. Another one there, right there. So, there can be circles like these that create shadows that we can then click on and make lines. Well, what if those are not the only circles here? What if there's another circle that's just been kind of in front of my face the whole time, uh, it being this one, this one right here? Is it making a shadow? Yeah, there's like a shadow over there. There's a shadow over there. There are some lines being made by the rails. The ends of these rails, they kind of have that little curvy shape that you get at the the end of a line, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. All right, so what do we want to do? The first thing that we need to do is we need to turn this rotating platform around so that this shadow will become a full circle. Um, and to do that, I think I need to turn it counterclockwise one so this part of the platform will be facing red this part will be facing purple so counterclockwise red and purple and because I've been looking at this platform it's uh, required me to get to know exactly how this works because I was just kind of guessing before so the way it works is that you decide you determine whether this is going to turn clockwise or counterclockwise by the solution that you put in the panel and you just you figure out which uh, direction the platform is going to be by drawing the shape of it here. I actually like this one because, like this, 
this panel has a direct use. It's like a direct and clear use of how you use the line puzzle to control a machine. I like it when they do that in this game. Not everything is like that, but uh, there are some puzzles that actually do that. Okay, what was I saying? Counterclockwise, red and purple. So it has to be red and purple. has to be counterclockwise. Uh, so let's see. If I wanted to do that, I guess I need to start here and then go like this and then around here. Whoops. Nope. Okay, counterclockwise, red and purple. There we go. So let's see. There's the end of that. And... Well, the circle is leaving now. It's off the platform. All right. But you can see, that lo does look like the end of a line there. does look like it. All right, so w this line, it's not going to appear all at once. I'm going to have to do this while the platform is moving. So let's see. I want it to turn... I think that we want it to turn clockwise... And the furthest we could turn it clockwise is the position where it's facing blue and purple. Okay, so clockwise, blue and purple. Uh, let's see if we can do that. So I think I'd have to start from here. Go clockwise. Go blue and purple. All right. So let's see what happens when this shadow appears. I'm going to want my shadow to be out of the way of the line, because I do cast a shadow, and that will get in the way of the line. It will block me from drawing the line, so I have to make sure that I'm not in the way. All right, there's that circle. There we go. Uh, let's draw it, let's draw it, let's draw it. Okay, it stops there. Let's see, is this going to do anything? It's, I'm losing the line. It's reaching the end. There's nothing to click on right now. Okay, so I lost that. So, maybe now that we've seen that happen, maybe we need to go the other way. So, all right. Um, meaning... I was turning clockwise. Maybe I want to turn counterclockwise. All right. So let me get into a starting position. Let me go clockwise so I'm on purple and red. Clockwise, purple, and red. So start from there, do that, and then around here. I think I might have to turn it one more. Since I'm going to be going counterclockwise. Alright, let me turn it clockwise so I'm on red and black. Uh, let's see. I think I have to start from here in that case. may still have to turn it one more from here. Because what I want is, since I'm going to be going the other way, I want to be in a position where the circle will appear while I'm turning. And that won't happen right here, because it's only just getting there. So, clockwise to black and blue. Clockwise, black and blue. Took a little while to realize that there was something here. And then I just noticed, hey, I mean, there's this right here. And that can't be a coincidence. There has to be something. And then I realized, oh, yeah, hey, would you look at that? There was indeed something there the whole time. Just never noticed it. Just never noticed it. All right. What do I want to do? What I want to do is I'm going to try. So the last thing I did was I went clockwise Right, and I was drawing this line, and then the shadow just, like, went away, went off the platform, so I lost the line. So I'm going to try to go counterclockwise, as far as I can go, and see what happens with this line. 
So that would mean if I'm going counterclockwise, I want it to stop on blue and purple. So counterclockwise, blue and purple. Um, let's see. To make that happen, which one do I need to start on? Uh, this one. Need to start on that. But, but it, it, okay, like that. So counterclockwise, blue and purple. All right. Let's get this. All right. So I think I have to draw this way because it looks like the other way is going to gonna lose it. Yeah, I can keep drawing this way. Keep drawing this way. Keep drawing this way. And when we get to the end of the railing... And there we go. That's one of them. But remember, there were two puzzles on that obelisk. And the second one does seem to be here as well. The second one is a bit less clear on how to get, but I think I, I think I know how to do it. The second one uses this right here. The shadow that that thing casts. And there's an endpoint right here. So what I need is to start a line that is going to end when the platform is in this position. So starting from over here somewhere. Okay. So I think I'm going to want to go back um, the, uh, the way I came, so clockwise. Let's take it one at a time so I don't miss it. So clockwise to purple and red. Uh, let's see. This would do clockwise to purple and red. I haven't spent that much time searching in Tetrisville for lines, just because I haven't. I didn't really like the machines like this thing I'm using right now. I didn't really like using it and figuring out how to use it, so I kind of avoided this area for the most part when it came to searching for lines. So I guess it's not a surprise that two of the last ones in the game ended up being here. All right, gonna go uh, clockwise again to red and black. Again, taking it one at a time. Uh, I can do it like this. Looking for that circle to appear. And once the circle appears, we're gonna go back counterclockwise and see if we can get to that ending point that we saw. All right, there's a circle. We have to turn clockwise one more time. Clockwise to black and blue. Then we're going to have to draw on this circle and we're going to have to, I think, cross from this line to another line, another shadow line. The line that we're looking for is more than one line. Multiple lines, making a line, okay. We wanna go the other way, we wanna go counterclockwise, and we're going to end on blue and purple. You following this? Hope so. Okay, so if I wanna go counter, I wanna go this way, I want to go this way, and then blue and purple. All right, let's see if we can do this. There's the circle. It's right there. I'm looking right at it. There it is. Actually, I think this might not be the direction I want the platform to go in. I'm just realizing it now, because this is the line that I just drew, and I don't know if... I'm going... Oh, there's my shadow. Turning around. I can't draw the line on my own shadow, though. That's not going to work. Yeah, that's going away. That is going away. Okay, so we need... So counterclockwise is not it. We need to go clockwise. That is what we need to do. So I was wrong about the direction that we would need to turn this in. I thought it would be this way because we can see the end of the line forming here. But I guess... We're going to have to approach from the other way. 
You see, there's the lot. There's the shadow of a uh, of that thing. You know, this thing. It looks kind of conspicuous. It's just there, not doing anything, but it's there. All right, let's um turn to black and blue counterclockwise. So if I want to do that um counterclockwise, uh, no, that won't work, will it? No, I have to do it like this. No, that's clockwise. Um, I would want to go this way, this way, this, no, no, this way, okay. So that's going, and there's the shadow of this thing moving across. Here is the shadow of the bar that has the circle on it. There's the circle. I need to push it back one more to black and red, counterclockwise. All right, black and red, counterclockwise. And then that's where you'll be able to make the circle. So from this position, I'm now going to spin it clockwise as far as I can go, and we'll see if we can draw this entire line. Okay. So I'm going to go clockwise this way, and the position that I would end it on in that case would be red and purple. All right, so I want clockwise, red, and purple. So this way, red and purple. The annoying thing about this puzzle is that if I get it wrong, it's going to take a minute to get set up again. All right, so let's look for it. Okay, got that. And now I think I'm going the other way. And I think before... I lose this line. Another shadow is going to come and save me. There, there, there. Okay, there we go. Picked it up, picked it up. We're going across, we're going across. But before we go off the platform, something else? Yes, that's coming. Now I can draw down, draw down, draw down. And then over to here. Now that just seems kind of silly, but that is a puzzle. Well, not only a puzzle, but it should be the case that the mountain obelisk has now been completed. We're going to go check that out. I want to go uh, red and black clockwise. Let's go clockwise for red and black. This one. Whoop, no, this one. This one. This one. There we go. We're going to head over to that obelisk, and that should be our fifth obelisk completed. Of course, before we get there, we do have to take another ride on this. The incredibly slow platform. Of course, it is slow, so you have the opportunity to draw the lines here. Like when those two circle, half circles meet, has to be slow, so you have the opportunity to notice and do that. But would be nice if it could be a little bit faster after you accomplished those puzzles. It is not. And so we wait. Waiting completed. All right, and we leave Tetris Town, I think, for the last time. Unless there happens to be some wisdom hidden in there, which is possible. It is possible. Yes, the fifth obelisk completed turned white 
All of its puzzles have been solved. And in fact, this was the first obelisk that I activated when I was standing on the mountain and drew the river. Which I think is this. It's this one right here. This river. Fifth obelisk completed. Fifth obelisk is done. Which means there is only one single environmental line left in the witness to complete. And that is on the obelisk by the shrine. And that is where I am going now. The final environmental line. You can see it there. It's sort of like a circle, sort of. It's a real, real wavy line. It's the only line left on this obelisk. Well, I've been looking around for it. And, you know, sometimes you, you notice things just when you don't really expect it for reasons that you don't expect. Like I was just walking around here and I stopped here and I just noticed a little sound. It's hard to hear. It's a very faint sort of flutish sound. Well, I don't know. I just noticed that it was in the background. And I, don't, I can't think of anything that makes that sound. I don't think it's the, that hollow tree in the middle of the bamboo forest. That makes a different sound. This is something different entirely. But I just noticed that and stood here to listen for a little bit. And then began to walk away. And wouldn't you know it, when you don't really expect it, you happen to come across things that you're looking for when you weren't deliberately looking for it in the first place. And with that, that means that every single line in the witness has been solved. The obelisk has turned white. All puzzles, all lines have been solved. And so, with that, with line completion now at 100%, it does seem like perhaps that means it's the end of the witness. But then I remember, oh yeah, there's like a lot of recordings that I missed. It's like a just like a, like a lot. According to that pond, there's a whole bunch of recordings that I missed, and I was wondering maybe you know maybe I should just call it in, call it call it in and say that's enough of the witness. Maybe doing all the lines is is good enough. But if if I'm this close. I might as well complete it, right? I mean, it's, it's what we play video games for. It's to find all of the things. We gotta find all of the things. So we're gonna find them.
parking right takes placing them. Yeah, I, I don't think it pays to be too neat. You only leave some traces of us for the intrepid to find. What do you mean? Any visitor to that island is going to hear quite a lot of us, if they poke around. Well, yeah, I know, sure, but I mean, showing what's happening behind the scenes a little bit to ensure we keep some authenticity. Because if we get too concerned with saying a bunch of wise things in the least personally revealing way, then we're basically putting up a front in danger of it becoming a false front. It's a slippery slope, and you know how easily we could slide into pomposity. Nobody wants that, but would we notice if it happened? Or are we too close to the project? Look, I just think if we include some of our interactions, show that we aren't these transcendent, perfect beings, that we get stuck sometimes, we get into arguments or get depressed, then at least it's not a false front. At least, at least we're not hiding. Authenticity is good, yes, but you can find human drama anywhere. I mean, we're drowning in it from day to day. We're supposed to be building a quiet environment away from drama, not celebrating it. Look, these are objects of contemplation. These are about focus and clarity. We agree to the outset. Yeah, I, I know, and I don't want to change any of that. Just. Just a little added twist, you know? Tucked away deep. It doesn't have to be drama, it's just reality. Reality. So what, we should record a meeting and stick it in? Maybe. But we already have some good stuff. Oh, like that little encounter the other week where you offered to buy a girl a sandwich? Oh. Her mic was running, so it's in the archive. Look, it's fine. In context, it's perfect, because we're not lecturing from on high. These recordings are part of an endeavor built by human beings. And they aspire to truth with a capital T, but we also have to remember that they cannot actually get there. We should be clear to the intrepid that we know this. I, th I think it'll make it better. Okay, sure. We'll at least see how it feels. I mean, on that island, we are going to be in very susceptible states. So, be careful with it. Mm, okay. It seems like it to be the pioneer of being mildly embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, also, I uh, should probably let you know, I'm, I'm recording this conversation right now. Oh, come on. No, I'm serious. Oh. What? What? It, it'll... It will make it better, trust me. Wait, was Jonathan Blow self-aware the whole time? I'm shocked. So, the witness is done. Over. Finished. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me try to play the game for this these past two years. Wow, that has been two years. Because uh, I greatly enjoyed playing it. You might not think so due to how long it took me to finish it, but I did enjoy playing it a lot. I just didn't always have the time to record. Um, I think The the Witness turned out to be an excellent puzzle game. I really enjoyed exploring the island and doing these line puzzles and learning what all the symbols meant. And that is something that I think that The Witness uh, did very well, this whole sense of it's teaching you how to solve these puzzles is teaching you what these symbols mean without actually using any text, any language, any tutorials. It just teaches you through symbols that start off simple but get increasingly difficult as the game goes on. And I think the game I think the game pulled that off really well. If there is a criticism I would have for the witness is that I felt that that didn't go far enough. Um the puzzles got more complex, yes, but I 
I, I was kind of hoping that learning all these different symbols and such would lead to something bigger. Um, and it, it didn't really. It didn't really. Like when you look at the last puzzles for the normal ending, the final challenge that you have there are just puzzles that you've done before, but now they're wrapped around columns, so you can't see the whole thing. Or the secret ending for which you do the challenge, which is this timed challenge in which you do a whole bunch of simple puzzles that you've already seen. And, you know, I had, I had fun doing it. I just kind of wanted learning these things to lead to something more. I mentioned earlier in this video that uh, the kind of puzzles I liked was was when they would do was when they would have a puzzle that would control machinery. Like the uh, the turning platform in the swamp is an example of that. How you use the lessons that you learned to operate this machine and what you're doing with the machine matches up exactly with what's on the panel. You're drawing the shape of the platform in the orientation you want it to be in and you're drawing it in the direction that you want it to turn. So when you get to things like that, where you're using the lessons that you learned to do something kind of, I guess, practical, uh, I thought that it really came together well, but I thought that there should have been more than that. You know, I was kind of hoping that it would lead to something where, you know, you would, you would use the lessons that you learned to somehow manipulate the island itself, something big like that, but it never really happened, never really had anything like that. The closest there was to anything like that was the environmental puzzles, but that doesn't really count because the environmental puzzles are a neat curiosity where you look at the world around you and say, oh, if I look at it from this perspective, I can see that there's a circle and a line there. That's neat. But, of course, they don't do anything. And maybe that's what I was looking for. I was looking for more along the lines of this leading up to me doing something with the island. And it didn't have that. Um, but... What was there, I enjoyed. I enjoyed uh, what was in the game a lot. I don't want to dwell too much on what was not in the game. Of course, something else that was not in the game is a story. Um, the closest thing you get to a story are some of the uh, out-of-character recordings in the end, in the cave, where you're hearing the people who put this together um, talk about the quotes that they should use for these recordings. Um and the impression that you get is that the island is something that is not an old civilization or anything like that, but rather maybe something recent that was made by a group of philosophers, thinkers that, well, we don't know what their purpose is. We know that with the recordings, they wanted to have, um, they, they wanted to have quotes from great thinkers talking about matters of spirituality, of reality and science, uh, God, the universe, things like that. Um, and they do talk about that in those out-of-character recordings, but I don't think they ever really mention what the purpose of the puzzles are. Like, that's something that kind of goes unexplained. And it's not that everything needs to go unexplained. Um, it's just that they give you a little bit, a little bit of story right there, and that's all. That's all there is. At the beginning of the game, you kind of assume that this island is probably an old society that died out where the people turned into statues or whatnot, and you're trying to figure out how their machinery worked. But no, I guess that's not the case. It's rather the case that this island is some sort of artificial construct that was built f by philosophers for some reason, and we don't know what the reason is. That's fine, though. This is not a game that really needs to have a story that is in your face. Um, but of course, uh, there are other games other puzzle games that do have much the stories that are much more put first and forward. One game that a lot of people compare The Witness to is the Talos Principle, um, which came out roughly the same time, and I greatly enjoyed that as well. Uh, different kinds of puzzles and a story that is it's not in the background. Not like The Witness where the story is just like really drip fed and is really just pushed into the background. The Talos Principle has a story that is really out in the foreground. It's a story-driven game. Uh, and I really like that one, too. Witness and Talos Principle, two games that take different philosophies when it comes to, uh, to what it is that they're offering you. What it is that they want the player to do and what they want the player to experience. Uh, and again, I don't want to dwell too much on what The Witness doesn't have, but rather say that I really enjoyed what it did have. Um, I really liked learning these puzzles, learning what the symbols did, going on to more difficult puzzles, and then, you know, eventually clearing out 
all of the uh, all of the end game stuff. Also, as I've mentioned before, great looking game. Island looks beautiful. I really like the environment that they made in this game. And uh, the witness seems like it would be a great vacation spot if some I don't know if I don't if, I don't think Jonathan Blow would ever have enough money to build such an island in reality. But that would be a pretty cool thing to visit. I don't think that'll happen though. But it would be cool if it did. So that's the end of the witness. Um, I've I am looking forward to seeing whatever it is that Jonathan Blow might do next, though considering how long it took to make The Witness, which was, I believe, around seven years, I don't think we should hold our breath. Uh, I think it's going to be some quite some time before we see anything from Mr. Blow and his team. But uh, I really liked my time with this game, and I hope that you liked your time with my time with this game. But that collective time is now over. The Witness is done. And I hope that you have a lot of good luck looking around in your environments and finding the circles and lines that are all around you.